so we start a new topic. Uh, we finished talk about strings, and uh, in the last two lectures we'll talk about something different. Uh, I will talk about specific data structures for integers. Uh, this kind of strange topics in, it's mostly theoretical. So the data structures we'll discuss today and next week are uh, mostly useless in practice. But in theory, it's kind of cool to have the data structures because in theory, you can say that actually we can do this, uh, solve this problem in this same complexity. In practice, usually you don't need it, but again, we'll, <laughs> uh, you, you'll see why it's not that pr very practical, but you know, what, what is, what, what's the story about? So uh, the story is that like, usually we have data structures like uh, binary search trees, like segment trees and other data structures. And when we use the state structures, we use we we have some uh, abstraction mode, mode. So so we have we have some abstract objects and some abstract operations with objects. And like we proved, for example, for binary search trees, it's like impossible to make binary search trees faster than in log n time if you if you only can compare to to, to two objects. If you can just, if you have comparator, you you need to run this comparator log n times to find the place of your objects in the sorted list, right? Uh, so it's kind of, <coughs> but sometimes you actually need data structure for integers. So you know that the objects are stored in your data structure are not some abstract objects, but they are integers. And we can do various stuff with integers. We can do, do all the arithmetic operations, we can do some other stuff. So we can index with integers in an in array. So uh, you, you have much more freedom when you work with integers, not with some abstract objects. And so people at some at some point starting to research what actually, how, can, can you actually improve the time complexity boundaries for these standard uh, problems if you work not with abstract objects, but with integers. And it turns out that in some uh, in some computational model, you actually can. So let's talk about what computational model we're working on. Uh, let's say we, we have all this, basically, what's, what's the motivation? So uh, if you, if, so usually we work in the RAM model, right? So we have RAM model. In RAM model, you have, uh, again, you have this, you have RAM, yeah? And you can get any element from your RAM in constant time just by index. So you need to store this indices somehow, yeah? So this i should be stored somehow. And how to store integers? No. Most usually you store the integers in some bit form. So, so, so this i is just a sequence of zeros and ones. Maybe not, but usually let's 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 hit let's see let, let, let's see what we do. And what, what can we do with these integers? No, if we if we need to index in the array, uh, we most probably will need to be able to perform some arithmetic operations. So we need to be able to uh, calculate the sum and difference and so on. Because how to index in the array? You need to find the first element of the array, yeah? So you, if you have the array in your RAM and you want to index in specific element of this array, you need to find the first element of the array, then add the difference so you will have the index of the element of your array, right? So you kind of need to have plus operation for your integers in constant time, right? And no, minus is actually the same as plus, so it's not, not, not an important. Uh, what about multiplication? Uh, multiplication is a little bit more complicated. Usually you kind of need multiplication, but not exactly. Uh, we will say that we can multiply to, to integers in constant time. That's actually the more controversial element here. Because multiplication is actually kind of... Multiplication is, is a hard operation. Yeah. So adding two integers is actually quite simple. You just go from here to here and add these bits. Yeah, you, you can do it in parallel and so on. So, so for multiplication, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, for example, you cannot build uh, the 
multiply you, so just, if you just use the um, boolean operations yeah so you can build build a boolean scheme of constant uh, depth uh, with polynomial number of elements so it's eh. so for, for multiplication it's slightly different so uh, but we will assume that we can multiply two elements in constant time uh, Division, yes, it was so let's say division. Integer division is a very strange operation. Again, it's even even more complicated than multiplication usually. So to, to divide one integer to another integer is kind of strange. You kind of need to put each bit. When you put these bits, you need to multiply this by this and check if it is known and so, so on. So so the integer division is complicated operation, but we will say that we also can Divide elements. We actually don't, don't don't need it that much, but let's just add it. Uh, now, what else? Uh, uh, yes, you can use this, you you can use FFT for multiplication, but still it's not in constant time. Yeah, but we will assume we can multiply two integers in constant time. So if we have this integer, so we have this indices. Yeah. So why you, why you may need multiplication in in your standard RAM model? Uh, for example, you have some array of objects, yeah? So if you have array of objects, you want to find the position of these objects, you need to multiply the index by the size of the object, so you know the position of, of your object, stuff like that. It's actually not required, you can do it without, but still, let, let's, let's say we can multiply elements. Yeah? Okay, that's a strange theory. Now, what else do we need? Uh, we will add also a bitwise operations. Uh, we will add bitwise and bitwise or bitwise xor and so on. Uh, you actually do it without it. You can do all without all this stuff, but I will just say that because in practice th these operations are actually simpler than than all arithmetic operations. So the bitwise operations are actually easy to parallel because you can just uh, you, you can just apply the bo boolean operation to every bit in parallel yeah so these operations are actually easy impl to implement in any processor in constant time and so the, the, the multiplication is kind of complicated but these bit operations are actually easy so so i'll just say that we can do this operation in constant time and we also will need uh, some let's say bitwise shift so, so we have shift to the left and shift to the right so this equation just move all the bits to this number of positions left or right uh, you can you can avoid this operation if you have multiplication you can actually avoid this operation you can just multiply by the power of two you can pre-calculate all the powers of two you need and then multiply by the corresponding power of two uh, so we actually, you actually can avoid these operations, but I'll say, again, these operations are much easier to implement in processor than this multiplication. So if, if we're allowed to use multiplication, it's safe to assume that we can also do all these operations in constant time as well. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, looks scary, right? <laughs> now, now, uh, we need one more parameter in our system. And this parameter will be the size of the integer we're using. So we will say that in our system, we use, uh, we use integers of size W. So the size of the word in our model will be equal to this W. Yeah? So all integers in our model have size w. And this w will be the parameter of our computational model. So when we calculate time complexity, we'll have two parameters. We'll have size of input and the size of the work in our model. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, I believe that's all we need by now. Now let's move to the data structures. What we'll discuss today? Today we'll discuss data structure, which is actually a binary search tree. So we will make all the operations which we have in binary search tree. So what operations do we need in binary search tree? In binary search tree, we need operations like insert element, 
a remove element and find the element. What about find element? Let's say we have some, like in C, we have lower bound, yeah? Let's see. So it will find the minimal y, which is greater or equal to x. Mm -hmm. well, like in C, in, in, in set in, in STL, right? So it will be enough. So, so if you just use a binary search tree, you can do all these operations in log n time. Yeah? So with BST, you have log n for all operations. And again, like we proved when we discussed uh, the, low, uh, the lower bounds for, for sorting algorithms, you cannot do binary search faster than log n time. Because if you do binary search faster than log n time, you can sort the elements faster than n, n log n time. You cannot sort like abstract elements in faster than n log n time. So <coughs> now, what if we have integers again? What if we have integers? We can actually make binary search tree faster than in log n time. Uh, how, how fast can we do it? Uh, in this lecture, in, in the next lecture, we'll discuss two data structures. Uh, first data structure we'll discuss today. First data structure we'll discuss today. Uh, and the time complexity for this data structure, so it's called y fast tree. Right. Yeah, I called the lecture x fast, x fast try, but Actually, the final data structure was today called Y first try. It's a strange naming. They have X first try and Y first try. This. So, so X first try will be like the middle point before we actually achieve the complexity for Y first try. And for Y first try, we can do all these operations in time log W. So the logarithm will be not of the size of the input, but of the size of the word you work in. Uh, there is another data structure with the same time complexity. It's called one and the boss string. One and the boss string. I will not cover today. Maybe we'll do it in some bonus lecture. It's kind of interesting, but it, it, it has all the same time complexity. So it's not that uh, it's not that important in this in this course. But but the same that this two data structures basically have the same time complexity. Do the same thing but have absolutely different structure, but do the same thing. Uh, and there is another data structure we'll discuss next lecture. Uh, it's called the fusion tree. Which actually have time complexity log n base w like this. <coughs> now let's, let, let, let's look at this. So what happens here? So uh, x plus try and y plus try, yes, x plus try is just, will be just a middle point before we actually get a y plus try, yeah. Uh, so, yes, y plus try is basically x plus try plus some tricks, yeah, that, that sounds right. Uh, what's interesting here, what's interesting here? So if you look uh, how the time complexity changes when you change the size of the word, uh, the, the time complexity of one and the boss tree and y first try is actually increasing. So if you increase the size of the word, this time complexity is increasing. So if you just increase this w, so this time complexity goes up, but this time complexity goes down. So, so these data structures work good and you have small size of the word. So, so number of bits here is small. So if you have small number of bits, you can use this data structure. Uh, and if the size of the word is big, you can actually use this structure because if you increase W, then this logarithm will, will be decreasing, right? And that's interesting because what we can do, we can check, we can, we can, we can, we can uh, just choose one of these data structures based on the size of the word. We can. So, so, some, so, so if at some point you need to build data structure for the given size of input and given size of the word, you can check which one is 
better and choose one of these data structure. And if you do this, you will achieve quite good time complexity, better than n log n for the sourcing algorithm. We'll discuss it next time when we'll talk about fusion trees. Uh, yeah. So today we'll talk about this data structure. Mm -hmm. Again, you forgot to say everything is clear every minute. Okay. So, okay. So, so that's our plan for today. Let's go. So, what is so, so, so what's the structure? We will be build two, two data structures. We'll be first we build X plus three. Then we'll modify it to build Y plus three. Uh, main idea of the X first try is build a structure which have this time complexity for the lower bound. So we'll first we will make this time complexity for the lower bound function, and then we'll apply some more tricks to make the insert and remove uh, operations work in in log W time as well. Cool. So what is X first try? X first try is basically a try. So I like this expression here because it's kind of connected to the, all the previous topics. So in, in the, just in the previous topics, in the previous lectures, we talked about uh, string data structures like tries when we talk about aho classic algorithm and stuff. So just we will apply the basically the same structure tries to four integers. So what we'll do? We'll make a try. So every every integer is basically a string of bits. So what we'll do, we'll build a try of these strings. Well, let's say, uh, let's see what, what we have, let's say, let's say w equal to, um, uh, let's take four bit integers. Uh, so we have elements, let's say 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 0. So let's have these five integers in our set. What we do, we, we build a try from these integers. So again, we, uh, we look at each of these integers as a string of four characters, yeah? So you have two characters, 0 and 1, and just build a try of these characters. So go from here, we have 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, the first element. Now we have 0, 1, 1, 0, this element. Uh, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, here. 1, 1, 0, 1. And finally this. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, even you have repeat elements, it's not a problem. Like in all of these structures, it's not a problem when you have repeat elements. You just can you 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 can have array of counters. Yeah. So if you have some repeated elements in your set. You, ha you can have a counter for each element, how many elements of this type you have in your set and so on. So, so it's, it's usually quite easy to move from set to multi-set. I, I will talk about set, but it's so, so I don't have any repeated elements. But e even if you have repeated elements, usually it's not a big problem. Oh. <coughs> now, how to find the elements? So imagine you build this tree. How to find the lower bound for a given so Now, you want to find lower bound for something, let's say, mm, like this. So given some integer, you want to find the lower bound of this integer in this uh, tree. So what, what, what you can do, you just follow this 
follow this path from from, from the object. So you try to, to try to find the smallest integer which is greater or equal than this. So you try to find this integer first. Let's try to find this integer in our try. So we just go from top. Go here, go here, go here. And at this point, we want to want to go here. So our x must be in the left subtree of this element, of this node here. But we don't have the, last sub, the left subtree. Mm -hmm. So the next element in the tree will be in the right subtree of this element. So what happened again? You're looking for some element x. You start from the root. You follow the path. This path is a prefix of the element x. And now the path goes to the right, to this right subtree. And your x must go to the left subtree. So in this x, you follow this path. And here you have 0, so, so x must be here. But in this, in this node, you don't have the left, left child, so you you, you you cannot extend with, with zero, yeah. So you need to go to the right child, and then in this right subtree, you just need to find the minimal element, right? So in this right subtree, you just find the minimal element here. This minimal element will be the next element after x. Yeah. So again. X must be here, so the next element right is, is in the right subtree, and it is the smallest element in this right subtree. So come, how, how can we do it? We just we can just pre-calculate the minimal element for each subtree, like in segment trees, exactly. So for each subtree, let's pre-calculate the minimal element in this subtree. So here we'll say the minimal element is zero zero one zero. Here it is zero zero one zero. Here it is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and so on. So for each subtree, you can pre-calculate the minimal element in this subtree. And so on. For each subtree, we can pre-calculate the minimal element in this subtree. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> I'll talk about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good question. But let, let, let's first solve this situation. So <clears throat> Now, in this situation, what happens? We follow this path, we end here. Now we want to go to the left. So we go to the right subtree and find the minimal element in this subtree. This minimal element will be the next element for the x. Mm. What if elements bigger than elements? We'll just return something. We'll just return something null something. So if your element is greater than all elements, really, you just return something like you, you control exception or something. You just say that there is no element in your subtree which can be returned. What's interesting? Interesting thing happens when you, for example, have lower bound of let's say. Let's say zero zero one one. So here we have slightly different situation. We go. We try to follow this path. We go here. We have zero zero one, and here we want to go to the right subtree, but we only have the left subtree. <coughs> so it's like mirror situation. So if you. You, you just some here. Now here you want to go to right subtree, but you only have the left subtree, and you want to go to the right subtree. How to find the next element in this case? Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, since the next element is not in your subtree. So you kind of want to go up, then go to the right subtree at some point, and then find minimal element there. But that's too much work. Let's let's do it easier. Let's do it like this. Let's go to the left subtree instead and find the maximal element here. So 
this element will be the previous element of x. So it will be the closest element to the left from x. So here we will do this element. So it's not the lower bound for x, but kind of the previous element for x. Yeah? So it's maximal element which is less than x. So we want to find minimal element greater than x, but we actually found the less, maximal element less than x. We find the closest element, but from different side. Yeah? So how to move from here to here? So this is element we're actually looking for. Very easily. We will just add a linked list. So we will just link all the all, link all the leaves of this tree with the linked list. So we'll add these pointers. <coughs> so now the solution is very simple. So if we if we have this situation, we try to go right. We actually go to the left, find the maximal element in this subtree, and then use this pointer, go to the next element. So this element will be the element we're looking for. Mm -hmm. That's all. Again. Again, what's the structure? We build this tray. For each subtree, we calculate the minimal and maximal element in this subtree. Yes, we, we yes we need to calculate maximum as well. Yes, for each subtree, we calculate minimal and maximal element in this subtree. So, actually, we need to calculate not as integers but as as pointers. So actually, what's going on for each subtree in the root of the in, in the root of the subtree, you have pointer to the to, to the maximal element and pointer to the to the minimal element in this subtree. So you need these two pointers, and also you, you you need pointers for each leaf to the next element to to the next leaf in the order. So all the leaves are actually linked to this linked list. What if no left subtree? <laughs> there must be at least one subtree. In every, every node in this tray have at least has at least one subtree. Mm -hmm. The only the only elements which has no subtrees are the leaves. And if if you if you follow all the path and end up in the leaf, then this is your element you're looking for. Every node except for leaves uh, has at least one subtree. So if we can't continue this path, then there must be another subtree. So if it is left subtree, you go to the maximum and then next. If it is right subtree, you go to the right subtree and then to the minimum. We can avoid least connecting leaves. So how can I avoid? Well, it, 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 you may have another solution for this. This is just the most easy solution for this so for, for this problem. So I believe if you actually want to save some memory, you can do it. Yes, you can find a little bit easier solution. But that's the easiest easiest way to solve this problem and then do the thing I want to do next. Because right now, it, right now, it's not what I'm looking for. So right now, the time complexity is not log W as expected. Right now, the time complexity is actually W. Yeah. So the time complexity of this solution is actually the of W. Uh, why it is so? Because we need to follow this path. So the size of this path may be up to W. So we need to follow this prefix, right? So for this prefix, we kind of need to follow this path from the root to this f f first, first, first time we don't have the edge. So to follow this path, we need to spend uh, this time. Yeah. Also, the memory complexity is to be. Yeah, yeah. Also, the the memory is now n w. Yeah. So we use too much memory, and 
we actually use too much time to make them. So let, 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 let's fix this. So by now, what do we have? Let me fix the results here. So right now, if we work, with, if we want to work with this data structure, what can we do? How to how to insert new element in this data structure? Uh, you just you just forget, like you insert the element in the tray. You follow this path and add all the edges you you, you need to add. Yeah. So you can insert element, just follow this path, add all the elements, then recalculate the maximum and minimum in each subtree. So let me time double you. Uh, you can remove the elements in the same way. So when you need to remove the element, you follow again, you follow this path, then remove all unnecessary edges. So if you don't have any children, then you remove the next one and so on. So you remove all unnecessary edges and remove all unnecessary nodes and then recalculate minimums. Again, you need only to update this one path in your try. So this path has length W, so you can remove element in time W. Yeah, basically the same like you remove elements from the try in string algorithms. And how to calculate lower bound? When you calculate lower bound, again, you follow this path, then go here, 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 and you find the lower bound. So time to like so. W and memory complexity is NW. Mm -hmm. That's not what I actually, not what we expected. Yeah? We, we tried to build a treasure for log W, but now we have W. W is more than log W, right? So let's fix it. So the first thing we'll fix is this lower bound time complexity. So for the lower bound time complexity, we'll do the following trick. Uh, let's let us let us see what's actually what's actually the most time consuming part of this of this data structure. Ta most time consuming part. That's that's not extra string. I will apply this trick and it will be, it will be extra string. Uh, uh, the most time consuming part here is to find this, uh, find this node. So to find this node, I follow this path from here to here. That's very time consuming, right? So what we'll do, we will try to find this node faster than in W, in, in time W. So uh, how to find this node faster than in linear time? It's actually quite easy. Uh, what's this node? Uh, this node, actually represents the maximal prefix of x, which has a node in our try. So we need to find the maximal prefix of x, which is actually in our try. And how to find the maximal prefix which exists in your try? Using binary search, of course. Let's make a binary search over the size of this prefix. Let's make a binary search and find the, uh, the largest prefix which actually exists in, in your try. But to make a binary search, we need to be able to check if given prefix actually exists in our try. Can you see it? Huh? Again, you're, you're given this, you're given this uh, integer. And we do binary search to find the longest prefix. So first we check prefix zero, zero. Oh, we have prefix zero, zero. Okay, so we extend it. So make binary search here. We check prefix zero, zero, one. Oh, we have this prefix. Okay, let's go first. So we check prefix zero, zero, one, one. Oh, we don't have it. So it's plus, 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 minus. So after login, after login iterations, we'll be able to find uh, the longest prefix. Yeah. Uh, and we can check if the prefix is in our uh, in our try using hash tables. We can just for each for each node, we can pre-calculate the integer corresponding to this node, put all these integers in a hash table, and then we'll be able to check in constant time. Again, what's the trick here? Trick here is that these strings are actually not strings; they're integers. You can put these integers in a single word. Yeah. Uh, so, and you can work with these integers like like with integers. So we can calculate hash function of this integer in constant time. Put these integers in a hash table in constant time, 
And then you can check if your given integer is in your hash table, again, in constant time. So you can do the binary search. In every step of your binary search, you just calculate this prefix. You can calculate the prefix, again, using all these arithmetic functions here. So again, if you need to calculate this prefix, you just need to erase all the bits here. So you just make the string of all zeros, remove it from your string, and then uh -huh, you only left these bits here. So you, you, you can use these bit operations just to, to erase all bits here and only left bits in this side. So you have this prefix as an integer. Uh, look, look up in your hash table and check if this integer is in your try. If it is, then you continue binary search to that side. If it's not, continue this. Side. So again, you can find this prefix in log n time just using binary search plus hash tables. Yeah, that's the downside of this data structure. You, you need you kind of need to have good hash table for this data structure. But we'll assume we can, we can make a good hash tables. We actually can for integers. We can actually prove that we can. Uh, so. So now the lower bound is actually working in log w time. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the XFast try. So XFast try is actually the structure uh, which can find lower bound for the given element in log w time, but all other operations are pretty slow. Mm -hmm. That's all. I think quite a cool idea. So, so again, the, the only idea we need is that we can find the maximal prefix of, of the given integer, which is in our try using binary search. You actually don't need this tree. You can, you can do it without trees. You can just, you can just make on, on the hash table. You actually, you, you actually don't need all this tree as a structure. Yeah. You only need a hash table for each for each integer. You can calculate the. So if, if you want to go, go go to the left, you just add zero to your value. If you want to go right, you add one to your value. So you can just uh, represent your node not as a node but as a integer. You still need this linked list, right? Hmm. 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 Okay, is it, is it clear enough? Now, now, now we'll solve, solve all other problems. Uh, uh, other problems here are in certain remove population works in, uh, in time W, not in log, not in log W. Uh, and also the memory complexity is too big. So the memory complexity should be linear. Interstitials of different leaves, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, 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 that's, that's a good point. So we, uh, yes, we, we, we actually, if we just take the some prefix, you may have the same integer for different levels. For example, for this node, you have integer 0, 0, 0, 0, because you removed all, you, you, you take only prefix of size 1, so your element is here. And for this element, you have integer 0, 0, because you removed all, Everything except first, so so integer is the same, but yes, there are different ways to deal with this. The easiest way is to have different hash maps for different levels. So for each level, you have you can have different hash map. Only for integers in this level, so you only know you, you always know the level you're working on, so it's inter so it's easy. Uh, another way to solve this problem is uh, when you want to represent the prefix of integer, you you, you take the prefix here. And then add one here and put all other zeros here. And this one here kind of says what level are you working on. It's another way of solving the problem. So, so you, again, you remove all bits except your prefix and then add one in this position. That's another way to solve the problem. Yeah. Yes, you, 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 need to, you need to have W plus one bits. You need, to, you need to have one extra bit for this situation, but yeah. Yeah, so, that, so, so there are some small details I, I, I 
don't, don't talk about but yes all other details are actually easy to solve Whew. let's go next so next I will use the trick so so again to solve this problem to to, to reduce this time complexity and this memory complexity I will use the same trick we used in the previous semester uh, when we talked about uh, about about list order maintenance maybe maybe you remember so so when we have this list and we try to find in constant time uh, which element is to the right which element is to the left maybe you remember so we had kind of the same problem we have first time for to check which element is to the right or left but we have a big time complexity when we insert or remove the element okay it was it was a semester ago maybe you forgot but uh, we'll use kind of the same trick what we'll do We will have all of the integers we need, and we will split all these integers into groups. Okay, we need bigger examples, so, so let's have some big example. Let's have again, again, let's have 10 plus D, 4. Okay, 4, four, four should be enough. Let's have some more integers here. We have one, two, four, five, seven, uh, ten, twelve, fifteen, fifteen. So we have this big list of integers. So these are the elements we need to put in the, in our data structure. We will split them into blocks. And the size of each block will be about W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have, let's allow one element again, like this. So the size of each block will be from, um, from W divided by four to W. Mm -hmm. And now we will build the data structure, uh, the same data structure we used. Before. So we will build X plus three, not over the elements, but over the blocks. So each block will be represented as an element in our X plus three. How to do it? Uh, basically, what you need is to build something like uh, so. Well, when we split all elements into groups. Uh, we have some, I'm sorry, so let's say, so all these elements are less than these elements. So let's say we have these elements are less than, let's say, three. This element are greater than three, but less or equal than seven. Yeah. So elements here are greater than seven, but less or equal than uh, 11, for example. And these elements are greater than 11. Each block is actually a segment of values, right? So let's find the boundaries of these segments. And now let's just add all these boundaries to the XFS tree. So we have this element three, element seven, and element 11. Oh, again, three, 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 three is one, one, zero, zero, seven is 0, 1, 1, 1, and 11 is, it's 8 plus 3, right? So it's 8 plus 3, I'll like this. Mm -hmm. So, that's how the structure will look like. Again, what happened? These are the elements. We 
split them into blocks. The size of each block is in the range from w over 4 to w. Mm -hmm. Now, we find some, uh, some, I know, some middle points which kind of distinguish these blocks one from each other. So, and we put all these middle points in this x first try. Mm -hmm. Now, how to find the next one? So, so f first, let's see what we didn't break anything. Let's say which we still can find the lower bound in this data structure in log w10. So how to find uh, lower bound in this data structure? Okay. So what we need, uh, well, again, you want to calculate lower bound, let's say for, for let's say, six. So how to calculate lower bound for six? What we need to do is to find in which block actually six must belong to. Uh, so how to find the block for the element six? Uh, we need to find the closest point in this upper tray, which is above this six. So we, uh, yeah, so we run a lower bound for this tray for this value s, for this value 6, find this value 7. Now we know if we have 6 in our, in our, in our set, this 6 must belong to this segment. Yeah? So 6 is somewhere here, if it is in the, in, 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 in the set. Now, inside this small block, we can run the lower bound algorithm. Find, find, try to find the lower bound inside this block. How to find lower bound inside this block? This question. So again, we split the operation in two. First, we find the block, and then we find lower bound inside block. We can find the block using the same lower bound function for this x first try. So we can find the block in log w time. And now we need to find lower bound inside this block. How to do it? Yes, you can use binary search inside this block. No, actually, we need to update this block. So we, we need to use binary search tree. Yeah. So we, so for each block, we actually build a standard binary search tree. AVL tree, red black tree, the one you will most like. Uh, and we run binary search here. So we'll spend log w time. No, 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 it's not, it's not the hate. It's, 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 it's. So we spend log w time to find the corresponding block plus another log w time to find the position inside this block. Still be log w. Uh, it may happen, it may happen that you actually find the block, but your element is not in this block. For example, what happens if you calculate lower bound, let's say for element 11. So calculate, no, or three, 11 is fine. So again, you can try to calculate lower bound for 11. You find this element. So if 11 is in your set, it must belong to this block. Now, in, inside this block, you try to find the lower bound of 11 and see that all elements in this block are actually less than 11. It may happen. So you try to find the position, but you, say, you find out that in this block, you actually don't have any element greater or equal than yeah, this one. What you can do, there are multiple, you can, you, can, you, can, you can make a linked list, but actually what you can do it easily, you can just go to the next block and find the minimal element in, in the next block. So if there is no element in your block, you go to the next block and take the first element in this block, like the minimal element in this block, and it will be your lower bound. So you, so, so, so you can, you need to check at most two blocks. You need to check your block and the next block. Your lower bound will be in one of these blocks. Mm -hmm. That's all. That, 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 that's how you find the lower bound in log w time.
So we didn't break anything, right? <laughs> but, so, so by now, it's the time complexity of the lower bound is the same. Uh, so we maintain, yes, we can, we, we can maintain blocks in linked list to do it faster. So we need to move from one block to another. We can maintain linked list of these blocks, yeah. Now, what about memory complexity? What about memory complexity? So, uh, the total size of all these binary search trees is linear. Yeah, size of binary search tree is linear. So the total time of total total memory complexity of all these binary search trees is linear. And what about number of elements in this try? Uh, in this try, we have about n over w leaves, yeah, because each leaf represents some block, and the size of this of each block is at least w over four. So it's like like it's no more than four n over w, right? The size of each block is at least w over four. So there are at most four n over w leaves. So the total number of elements in this try is at most 4n. So the size of this try is linear. Again, it, it was multiplied by w, but then we reduced the number of elements by w. So now the total number of elements here is linear. Okay, let's update this. And finally, finally, we need to update this insert and remove operations. So what happens when you insert new element? Well, let's try to insert something. Let's try to insert something. Well, let's try to insert 8, for example. 8, oh, eight will be here. Uh, can I insert something to make Make it overflow. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's insert six, for example. So, what happens when I insert six? Well, first, let's find the block the six must belong to. So, again, we run lower bound here, find this block, then add six to this block. So again, we run lower bound operation here, find this 7. We find the 6 must belong to this block. Add 6 to this block. We do this in log w time. Uh, and then insert 6 here in log w time. Again, we insert 6 just by inserting this element in the binary search tree. Size of this binary search tree is w, so we insert 6 in this binary search tree in log w time. Mm -hmm. At some point, there may be a problem. So this size of this block may be too big. So, so, so it's, it, it will not fit in this range. So what, 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 what we need to do then the size of the block is too big. For example, let's say this block is too big. So it's, it's four, it's actually, it's actually fits, but no. let's just imagine that this block is too big. So the size of this block is too, too, too large. We need to do something. So what, we, what, what can we do? then the size of the block is too big. We can actually split the block in, in two. So we can take this block and split it into, into two blocks. So again, what happened? I inserted new element in the, in the data structure. I inserted it into some blocks. Now, when I insert new element in this block, this block is too big. I need to do something. So what I will do? I will split this block into half. So I'll have this block and this block. <coughs> I will adjust this border. So in, in left border, I will put all elements greater than three and less or equal than five. Let's say in here, we'll greater than five and less or equal than seven. Mm -hmm. And now, so this five is a new border. Let's, let's make it red. 
Now I have this new border, border, border between these two elements. I need to add this 5 into this extra string. Oh, I, I, I can add element in the extra string. I just add this 5 to my extra string. Uh, so 5 is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Mm -hmm. So again, what I did, I split this block into two blocks. Now I get one more border between these two blocks. I add this border to my XFS tree, XFS try, and that's all. That's how I deal with uh, big blocks. So if I have a big block, I split it in two, make a new border, add new, add new element to my XFS tree. So what's the complexity for insert L? Hmm. So what's the complexity for this insert operation? First, I need to find this block. So I need to find the block, I need to add my new elements. So I need to spend log W to find block. Then I need to log W to insert. How to split the block? I, I, I will just split it manually. I will spend W time. So, so, so I need to add new element here. So when I need to add element here, I need to spend W time. So I can spend another W time just to iterate through all elements here, find the middle point and so on. And, and uh, to split block. Yep. So again, when the, then the, the block is big, I need to have I need to spend W time to insert new element here. So it doesn't matter if, if I do it slowly. So I can iterate all elements of the block, find the middle point, just make array of this element, array of this element, adjust all the borders. So, so, so. so you, 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 you don't need to do it fast. You actually can do it fast. Yeah, if you have binary search trees, you can split binary search trees into using split operation, yeah? But you actually don't need it. Now, <clears throat> let's see. So, so this operation is actually costly. So, so I need to spend W time to split blocks. But it actually happened not very often. So what happens so if I split the blocks? Then now I both size of this block, both this block. So, so if the size of this block is uh, W, I split it into two blocks. Now size of both these blocks is W over 2. Now, before these blocks will overflow again, I need to insert W over 2 elements in, in these blocks. So this, the size of these blocks is far away from the next overflow point. Mm -hmm. So this split operation actually uh, uh, need to perform this operation every W about operation. So we don't split blocks every time. We split blocks when they overflow. And if the blocks overflows, it will split into two blocks of size W over 2. So it will be far away from the next overflow. So before the next overflow, we need to add another W over 2 elements here. So the split operation happens with each element at, le at least after the next W operations. So the like average time for this operation, like amortized time. So if you remember how amortized time collects works. So the amortized time of this split will be constant, yeah? That's all. So now the total amortized time of insert operation is log W. So it's log W here plus amortized one here. So let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing when you remove element. When we remove element from the from, from the data structure, we remove it from the block. If the block is too small, then we merge this block with some neighbor node. So, so, so when this block is small, 
So you have some block of size w over 4 and you want to remove some element from this block. You take some another, no, some another block and try to merge with this block. Again, I don't remember if we discussed B trees. Do you know how B trees work? It's actually the same algorithm we used when we uh, work with B trees. Uh, so again, what, what, what's, what's, what's happening? You, you, when the size of the block is too small, you take s s the neighboring node, uh, neighboring block. If the size of this block is, let's say, less than w over two, then we just merge this block into one, and we have block from size of size from. Again, the size of the block will be from w over four to w over four. So size of this merge block will be from w over two to three fourth down. So, and if this block is big, so it's size from w over two to w. You can take this block and uh, just sp split the elements evenly. So, so you can just have something here and something here. So the size of this things will be from uh, w4 plus this is split b or this is split b or this is split b or right? So again, the trick is that after this operation, the size of this block should be far away from both points. So you have like, you have two extreme points w over 4 and w. And the trick is that after all these operations, when you merge something, split something, your size of your si size of your block must be far away from both these points. So it must be uh, some alpha w here. So if your size is in this, in this range, you are fine. Because before you need to apply the next slow operation, you need to add at least these many elements here or remove it this one. So you need to remove these elements or add this number of elements. And if both these uh, gaps are big enough, then you are far away from the next slow operation. Ah, yes, we discussed p -trees when we discussed external memory. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of the same trick like in B-trees. That's all. That's how we make. That's how we make remove operation block. Mm. No, er, no, er, everything will be amortized. Yeah. No, no, not not exactly. Right. Okay. We can say that something is amortized, something is not. Um. Good. So that's all. That's Wi-Fi stream. Mm -hmm. Again, you can use YFS3 when you have a small size of the integer. So if the number of bits is small, you can do something like that and actually have better time complexity than you have with regular bit structures. So again, you can sort, for example, you, again, this is the binary search tree. You can sort elements using this. Structure. So you can actually sort the integers using the data structure in uh, and log w time. Hmm. 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 Now, before we, <coughs> before we next, uh, let's discuss this, this one. <coughs> what is actually better to have algorithm with log W complexity or log N? Which one is better? What do you think? Uh, 
the thing is, usually in practice, in practice, uh, W is much smaller than N. So W is the size of your in so size size of the word. So it's usually like thirty-two or sixty-four or one twenty-eight at maximum. Yeah. So usually this W is pretty small. Uh, yeah. And usually we work with some big data structures. So usually the number of elements is much more than the number of bits. But in that's this practice. And as I said, these structures are not very practical. In theory, what's the uh, connection between this W and N? And <clears throat> for theory, the only connection we know about W and N that uh, Again, how, how this W and N are connected? Uh, they are connected in a very simple way. Uh, uh, N is an integer. N is the size of the input. So we need to be able to store this N in, in this word, right? So this number of bits should be enough to fit number N. So W should be at least log N. And the problem is that actually that's all we know about W. Yeah. So we know W is at least log n because if it's not, we cannot store the n in, in this from in, in this word, and it's kind of strange. Uh, but we don't have any upper bound on this W. So W can be big, so why not? So we, have, we can have small data structure with very big integers. Why not? Uh, so again, and this data structure works with when this W is small. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. What happens if that if W is big? Again, next lecture we'll discuss fusion trees. It's very cool that structure. It will help. <laughs> it, it it will take the full advantage of this big W. So again, now let's have yeah, yeah. Just to give you some uh, uh, clues about what's going on in the next lecture, I will discuss how, how big W can actually help you to make faster algorithms. Why big W may be a good thing? So why, why may we have the algorithm which actually de decreased complexity when we, uh, when we, when we make... Uh -huh. So why it may be that we uh, increase the W and then complexity is decreasing. It's actually maybe because the, when we, when W is big and we still can make this arithmetic operations in constant time, then we actually can, no, like arithmetic operation on big integer is like many small operations. Like, yeah. <clears throat> And what, what's happened when you have two integers here yeah? and you calculate, let's say, plus of this operation? Uh, so when you calculate sum of two elements, you actually need to sum these elements and these elements and these and this and this and this and this and this. And this. So you make many small operations in constant time. And if this W is big, it means you can make uh, more operations in constant time. So by increasing the W, you kind of increase the like increase the number of small operations you can do in constant time, mm -hmm. and we can we can use it. So we can actually use this like parallelism, yeah, to make faster data structures in theory. Mm. Yeah. So, for example, for example, what we can do? Let's solve a few problems before the next lecture. So, in the next lecture, we'll abuse this technique at maximum. But, but now let's just now just let's just solve some small problems. Uh, first small problem. For example, what you can do if if number of W is big, you can split it into blocks. And put some small integers into this block. So let's put some small integers. Size of integers b. 
a1, a2, a3, and so on, ak. And k is like w over p. Mm -hmm. imagine, you, imagine you want to do something with small integers, and you have a big register of your processor. Yeah, that's actually what processors do, but not exactly like, th like this, but... What you can do? <coughs> you can apply some operations to all elements of this list at once. So, so you have list of k small integers stored in one big integer. You can apply some operation to all of these integers at once. For example, you have this integer and another integer. b1, b2, b3, and so on, bk. So let's say this integer a, this integer b. So what will happen if you calculate a plus b? So, hmm? Radix sort, yes, radix sort is actually, yes. The time complexity of radix sort is actually increasing when you increase the size of the means. Yeah. That's yeah. yes, what happened in radix sort. You apply operations for the different registers one by one. So it's linear by the times. <coughs> so radix sort is not a good example. Let's see. So what will happen if we calculate some of these elements? Again, what will happen if we calculate some of these elements? You take these two blocks of bits and calculate their sum. So the sum of these two small integers will be put into this block. So this block will contain actually sum, sum ak plus bk. If the sum fits into block of size, so, so let's say the a i plus b i is less than two power of b. Yeah. So it. So it. So if if we if you guarantee that this uh, sum fits into this block, yeah, and so on. So every every element here will contain the sum of these two elements. Mm -hmm. So we just we just calculate k sums into one operation. Yeah. Again, this operation works in constant time. Since we assume that we can work with this, this big integers in constant, we, we assume we can make all these operations in constant time. If we can make operations in constant time, we can take some of these two big integers and calculate this sum, and it will contain all these small sums. Mm -hmm. Now let's do let's do something more interesting. Let's do something more interesting. Uh, let's have an array again, array of k elements, and have some integer k, small integer. I want to find the number of elements in array A which are, let's say, let's say, let's say, greater or equal than x. <coughs> what we need to do usually, you can iterate over all elements and check if this element is greater or equal than x. But I want to do it in a single operation using all these bit tricks. How, how can you compare two elements using arithmetic operations? So if you, again, I, I don't want to make the comparison. Comparison returns you Boolean value, true or false. I don't want Boolean value. I want some integer value so it will have more information. Yeah. So how, how can you compare two elements? This is element AI and element X. How can you compare two integers using just integer operations? Mm. Now basically what you need to do, 
is to subtract this element from this element and check if the result is negative or not. Yeah? Look, that's basically if you want to say x is the same as a minus x is greater or equal to zero. Yeah? But I don't want to have any negative numbers. Negative numbers are actually you, you can do it, but yeah. I want everything to stay positive. So I will just add one extra bit here. Extra one, uh, and one extra zero here. So I will make sure that this integer is actually greater than this. And then subtract them. Now in the result, I will look into this bit. This bit will contain the result of this compression. So if a was greater or equal than x, then I will subtract this from this. Mm -hmm. This bit will not be used. So this bit will stay 1. Mm. And if a is less than x, then when I subtract, I need to use this bit here. So I'll take this bit, so in the end it will be 0. Mm -hmm. So this bit of the result actually contains information about this compression. Okay? And now what I what I can do? I can apply the same pressure to all these integers at the same time. So I'll do it like this. Let's put one extra one here, so it will be a1, 1, a2, 1. So I'll add one, one extra bit here and make the following strings. 0x, 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 0x. Then subtract this from this and look at these bits. Mm -hmm. So these bits will contain information about all the comparisons. Mm -hmm. No, no, to come, to come back at it. Again, let, 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 once again, what 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 are you trying to do? I'm trying to compare x to all elements in array A using only integer operations because Boolean operation takes you gives you two two two, two, two small information. Yeah. Uh, so when you compare, like how to compare elements using integer operations? You just subtract element and look at this bit here. How to, how to count these bits? That's a good that's a good question. Just give, <laughs> yes, we'll talk about it. Right now, let's let's stop here. So, again, how to compare to integers? You you sub you put one here, put zero here, subtract and look at this bit. So this bit contains information about this compression. Now, good good question is how to how to count? We need to take some of these bits. So we now now we need to take some of these solids. Let's put some alpha, beta, gamma, like this. So we need to calculate some of these two bits, of four bits. And again, we want to do it in constant time using some bit magic arithmetic operations and stop and so on. So again, we calculate it as D as a minus x. Mm -hmm. Ah, by the way, I, I, I missed this point. How to build this array? How to build this array of x's? So I want to have x and multiply it k times. Is it clear how to make this array? So if... 
So you have this small integer x and you want to build this array of x's. Is it clear how to do it in constant time? So, so again, again what, what happened? You, you have some small integers. So you have some of them. 0, 1, 1. And you want to make a big integer containing blocks. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Yeah. No, you, you can't make shift and, and take it because it, I want to do it in constant time. So I will just multiply it by the following mask. I will put once in these positions. And we'll have this result. Mm -hmm. So again, again, what happens when you multiply two integers? You actually take these positions when you have ones and shift these elements into this position and take the sum of this element. I can do it in log w time, but I don't want to spend log w time. I want to do it in constant time. My plan is to do everything in constant time. So again, I will pre-calculate this special mask. And now my result will be just x multiplied by m. So again, why multiplication? Because what I, what I need to do, I need to have this 0, 1, 1 plus this 0, 1, 1 plus 0, 1, 1 plus this 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this element will be x. This will be x shifted to the left three positions. So it will be x multiplied by 2 in power of 3. This will be x multiplied by 2 in power of 6. This will be x multiplied by 2 in the power of uh, 9. So I ne just need to take sum of all these elements. So it will be x multiplied by 1 plus 2 in the power of 3 plus 2 in the power of 6 plus 2 in the power of 9. And this is m. Mm -hmm. Now this m is 1 in position 0 plus 1 in position 3 plus 1 in position 6 plus 1 in position 9. Again, this is just because how, how multiplication works. So multiplication in binary is just you take these positions, shift your x into these positions, and then take sum of all these elements. Not clear enough, not clear enough. Hmm? Again, maybe it's a little bit easier to understand this in decimal. So in decimal, if you want to have, if you have digit, if you have some decimal digit seven, and you want to build integer, let's say seven, zero, seven, zero, seven, you need to multiply it by one, zero, one, zero, one, and you will get this integer. Okay? So in decimal, it also works. So if you, if, if you multiply some digit by some integer of zeros and ones, you will just replace this once with this element. The same thing happens here. So you have this once in these positions. When you multiply this mask by this small integer, it will replace each one with this mask. Yeah. Okay, hope it's clear enough. <coughs> now the final thing. Uh, I need to calculate the sum of all these bits. First of all, I need to remove all other bits. So I will remove all other bits just by ending with this mask. So I will make a mask I will make a mask when I have here, I have zeros, here I have one, here I have zeros, and hold it. So here I have one, here, here, here I have zeros. I will calculate 
bitwise end with this mask. Now all the bits except these four are zeros. Now I have this beautiful, here I have zeros, beta, zeros, gamma, zeros, and delta. Again, now all bits except these four bits are zeros. Now how to calculate sum of these two four bits? The same, same trick as here. Let's see. So I take this number. So, so let's take this number and uh, let's call it again. Let's call it D. So I will just D. I will end it as a mask. So I have this alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Now I will shift it left by the size of this block. So this so beta will be here, gamma, delta, and alpha goes here. Now again, I will shift it again. Beta, gamma, beta. And once again. And now calculate sum of all these shifts. When I calculate sum of all these shifts, then here, I will get a sum of all these bits. And how to calculate sum of all these shifts in constant time? Look, using the same trick as here. Uh, so this sum is just multiplication by some matrix, by, 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 by the same mask actually. So, Again, this element is just D. This is D multiplied by 2 in power of B. This is D multiplied by 2 in power 2B. This is D multiplied by 2 in 3B and so on. So when I calculate sum of all these elements, it's just D multiplied by 1 plus 2 in power B plus 2 in power 2B plus and so on. So it's just M. The same M is here. Okay. So again, you take this integer, uh, this bit vector, vector, multiplied by the same mask as here. And when you multiply it, then in this position, you will get the sum of these bits. Now you just need to remove all other bits and shift it to the right, and you will get the sum. That's the whole trick. Yes, multiplication is actually overpowerful. Uh, that's why actually that's why the, all this theory is not very practical. So in this theory, we actually think that we can multiply elements in constant time, but also it also it, it only works when w is big. So we kind of need to have big integers, and at the same time we need to be able to multiply them in constant time. No one knows how to do it right now. One more. Okay, let's have one more final problem. Uh, in the final problem, I want to apply the same trick to find the highest one bit in 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 the integer. I'll just do the same trick again, actually. Uh, so what we have, we have some integer. Uh, let's have something. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 0, 1. And here something. One one zero zero and zero one. something like that. Okay. 
So you have the integer a. And your the problem is to find the highest bit in this. Can you use centric to calculate sum of bits in the whole world? You actually don't. You can calculate sum of bits in the whole world, but not like this. Uh, the problem is you don't have space. Ah, I forgot to mention it. Yeah, I forgot to mention. Actually, wh when you calculate this, the, 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 the one to calculate, we need to. Uh, so in this right position, we, we need to have enough space to store this sum. So the size of this block should be at least longer of this sum log k, right? So you need some space between these bits to store the sum. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the final problem, final problem for, final problem for today will be you have some integer and you want to find the highest bit of this integer. How to do it? Easy. So what we what we'll do? We will split the block into block. We'll split the integer into blocks of size square root of w. Now. We will do the following. We will make a uh, some kind of short version of this integer. So for each block, we will check if this block is zero or not. So this block is zero, this block is not zero, this is not zero, this is zero. Okay, the size of this block is square root of w. Mm -hmm. Now, we will construct this small integer. Now, in this small integer, we, we, we will try to need the highest bit. So we will find this bit. Mm -hmm. Now we know the block when where we have the highest bit. So we know that the highest bit is in this block. So this is a leftmost non-empty block. So it's this block. Now we need to find the highest bit inside this block. So we take this block. So we take a2. Uh, let's say a2, like this. And find the highest bit in this block. So it will be this. And now we know where the highest bit is. So again, we construct the sketch. Like for each uh, block, we make one bit. If this block is uh, empty or not. Now we have this small integer. In this small integer, we need to find the highest bit. This highest bit will tell you which block actually contains the highest bit of this integer. Now we take this highest block, uh, this this leftmost non-empty block. In this block. We apply the same procedure to find the highest bit. Huh? So now we just need to find the highest bit in a small integer. Hmm? The size of both this integer is square root of w. So size of this is square root of w. And because size of the block is square root of w, so we have square root of w blocks. Yeah? And size of this is square root of w. So now we only need to solve the problem for the small integer. Mm -hmm. So again, how to find the highest bit? We will hide highest on empty block, and then inside this block we will hide the highest bit. So both this problem is just to find the highest bit in a small integer. We will solve it twice, and then find the highest bit. So how to find the highest bit in a small integer? Very easy. Well, let's see. You have some 4-bit integer. Uh, so if you have the first bit set, this bit set, uh, then your integer is actually greater or equal than this. Uh, I want to have less. 
What problem with this law? Doesn't matter actually. Rather than this. So if you have one, zero, and something, it is greater or equal than one, zero, zero. If you have one, zero, zero, one, something, then it's greater or equal than this. If it is zero, 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 one, it is greater or equal than this. Now, to find the highest bit in a small integer, I need to uh, find the number of inequalities which is right here. So again, you have this, again, you have this, for example, you have zero, one, one, zero. So you check if it is greater or equal than this, not. It is greater or equal than this, yes, yes and yes. So if free, if free inequality is satisfied, then the third bit is set. Mm -hmm. So again, we just check all these in equations and the number of satisfying equations will be the number of your bit. Yeah, and we just solved this problem. Yeah. No, it, it, it looks slightly different, but it's, it is the same problem. We have some integer and we have a number of equations. So we'll put these equations in a big integer and solve them in, in constant number of operations. That's all. And now we just need to solve it twice. We need to solve it here and here again. In both operations is just to find the highest bit in a small integer. Mm -hmm. Now, there's only one detail I actually missed. Can you spot the detail I actually missed? <laughs> the only thing I, I, I didn't tell you is how to find this, this sketch, actually. How to, how, how, to, how to build this small integer A prime, which contain information about all the blocks. We can do it like this, okay? You can do it like this. So first you take your number A. Then you use the same trick to build the following. So, so, so you have number A. Again, zero, 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 zero. Uh, Now for each block, you need to check if it is block greater or, or zero. So, so you need to check if it is greater or zero for each block. You can do it using the same trick. So you construct the following. Again, you make this, you, you make this mask, subtract and so on. So here you have zero, one, one, zero. That's almost what you need. So you need you, you need this small integer. You have all these bits. You have zero here, one here, one here, and zero here. And but the problem is these bits are not together. So so they're in different points of your integer, and you want to move them closer. How you do it? You do it using the same trick as before. Uh, so when we try to calculate the sum of these bits. We just multiply it by the matrix, so we shift them b positions to the left. And now we just shift them b minus 1 position to the left. Yeah. So again, we will shift it to the left. So this, uh, uh, so this 1 goes here. Mm. And then again, shift it to the left. So it is 0, 1, 0 here. And then again. And then calculate sum of all these elements. Again, it will be some. It's just multiplication by the mask with ones uh, at distance b minus one. So each time we shift the so it is one plus uh, two in power b minus one plus two in the power two b minus one plus and so on. So multiply it by this mask. And now here you will have this sum. 
here, you will have one zero zero one. Now again, you remove all, 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 all other bits, move these bits to the right, and then you have this sketch. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you.